Removing and Replacing Parts HP ProBook X360 11G7 Education Edition How to Replace the Top Cover with Keyboard Removal On the bottom of the notebook, remove the five T9 Torx head screws that secure the top cover to the base enclosure. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the top cover to the base enclosure. Turn the notebook right side up and open the display panel. Starting at the top right corner, carefully separate the top cover from the base enclosure. Using minimal force, lift the rear edge of the top cover and rotate it toward the front of the notebook until you have access to the ribbon cables and ZIF connectors. Lift the locking bar up on the keyboard ZIF connector and disconnect the keyboard ribbon cable from the system board. Lift the locking bar up on the touchpad ZIF connector and disconnect the touchpad ribbon cable from the system board. Lift the locking bar up on the transfer board ZIF connector and disconnect the transfer board ribbon cable from the system board. Remove the top cover from the base enclosure. Replacement. Note, before installing a new top cover, remove the following from the old top cover and install it on the new top cover. Touchpad and bracket. Top cover webcam and bracket. Transfer board. Place the top cover into position on the base enclosure so that you have access to the ribbon cables and ZIF connectors. Insert the transfer board ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the system board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Insert the touchpad ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the system board and press the locking bar down. Insert the keyboard ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the system board and press the locking bar down. Lower the top cover onto the base enclosure and press down on the edges of the top cover until it clicks into place. Close the display panel and turn the notebook over. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the top cover to the base enclosure. Replace the five T9 Torx head screws that secure the top cover to the base enclosure. How to replace the touchpad. Before you begin, remove the top cover. Removal. Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the touchpad ZIF connector and disconnect the touchpad ribbon cable from the touchpad. Remove the touchpad ribbon cable from the adhesive that secures it to the touchpad. Remove the seven P1 Phillips head screws that secure the touchpad bracket to the top cover. Lift the touchpad bracket off of its alignment pins on the top cover and remove. Remove the black rubber pad from the adhesive on the touchpad. Peel back the grounding tape that secures the touchpad to the top cover. Peel back the metallic mylar tape that partially covers the touchpad. Remove the three P1 Phillips head screws that secure the touchpad to the top cover. Lift the touchpad off of its alignment pins on the top cover and remove. Replacement. Place the touchpad onto its alignment pins on the top cover. Replace the three P1 Phillips head screws that secure the touchpad to the top cover. Replace the metallic mylar tape that partially covers the touchpad. Replace the grounding tape that secures the touchpad to the top cover. 
Replace the black rubber pad and press down to adhere it to the touchpad. Place the touchpad bracket onto its alignment pins on the top cover. Replace the seven P1 Phillips head screws that secure the touchpad bracket to the top cover. Insert the touchpad ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the touchpad and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Press down on the touchpad ribbon cable to adhere it to the touchpad. How to replace the world-facing webcam. Before you begin, remove the top cover. Removal. Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the webcam ZIF connector and disconnect the webcam ribbon cable from the transfer board. Remove the three P1 Phillips broadhead screws that secure the webcam bracket to the top cover. Lift the webcam bracket off of the alignment pins on the top cover and remove. Remove the P000 Phillips head screw that secures the webcam to the top cover. Carefully, remove the foil that secures the webcam to the top cover. Lift the webcam up from its alignment pin and slide it out from under the retention clip and remove. Replacement. Slide the webcam under the retention clip on the top cover and place it on its alignment pin. Replace the P000 Phillips head screw that secures the webcam to the top cover. Replace the foil that secures the webcam to the top cover. Place the webcam bracket on the alignment pins on the top cover. Replace the three P1 Phillips broadhead screws that secure the webcam bracket to the top cover. Insert the webcam ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the transfer board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. How to replace the transfer board. Before you begin, remove the top cover. Removal. Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the transfer board ZIF connector and disconnect the transfer board ribbon cable from the transfer board. Lift the locking bar up on the webcam ZIF connector and disconnect the webcam ribbon cable from the transfer board. Remove the P1 Phillips broadhead screw that secures the transfer board to the top cover. Lift the transfer board off of its alignment pins on the top cover and remove. Replacement. Place the transfer board onto its alignment pins on the top cover. Replace the P1 Phillips broadhead screw that secures the transfer board to the top cover. Insert the webcam ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the transfer board, and then press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Insert the transfer board ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the transfer board, and press the locking bar down. How to replace the battery. Before you begin, remove the top cover. Removal. Warning. To avoid personal injury and damage to the product, use extreme care not to puncture, twist, or crack the battery. An internal puncture or rupture to the battery has the potential to cause a short, which may result in a thermal event. Remove the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the battery to the base enclosure. Lift the front edge of the battery to disconnect it from the system board, and then lift it off of its alignment pins on the base enclosure and remove. Replacement. Place the battery onto its alignment pins on the base enclosure. Replace the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the battery to the base enclosure. How to replace the M.2 solid state drive. Before you begin, remove the top cover and battery. Removal. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the right speaker to the base enclosure. Lift 
Lift the right speaker off of its alignment pins on the base enclosure and set aside. Remove the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the M.2 solid state drive to the base enclosure. Grasp the M.2 solid state drive by the edges and pull gently to remove it. Replacement. Align the notch in the M.2 solid state drive with the key in the M.2 solid state drive slot on the system board. Gently insert the solid state drive into its slot on the system board. Replace the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the solid state drive to the base enclosure. Place the right speaker on the alignment pins on the base enclosure. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the right speaker to the base enclosure. How to replace the speakers. Before you begin, remove the top cover and battery. Removal. Important. Make careful note of the routing of the speaker cable for later replacement. Disconnect the speaker cable from its connector on the system board. Remove the speaker cable from the routing channels on the base enclosure. Remove the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the speakers to the base enclosure. Lift the speakers off of their alignment pins on the base enclosure and remove. Replacement. Place the speakers onto their alignment pins on the base enclosure. Replace the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the speakers to the base enclosure. Route the speaker cable into the routing channels on the base enclosure. Reconnect the speaker cable to its connectors on the system board. How to replace the RTC battery. Before you begin, remove the top cover, battery, and speakers. Removal. Important, make careful note of the routing of the RTC battery cable for later replacement. Disconnect the RTC battery cable from its connector on the system board. Remove the RTC battery cable from the routing channel on the base enclosure. Loosen the RTC battery from the adhesive that secures it to the base enclosure. Remove the RTC battery from the clips that secure it to the base enclosure. Replacement. Insert the RTC battery under the clips that secure it to the base enclosure. Press down on the RTC battery to adhere it to the base enclosure. Route the RTC battery cable into the routing channel on the base enclosure. Reconnect the RTC battery cable to its connector on the system board. How to replace the wireless LAN module. Before you begin, remove the top cover and battery. Removal. Caution. Use care when disconnecting the wireless antenna cables from the wireless LAN module. A damaged cable or connector can degrade notebook performance. 
Carefully disconnect the wireless antenna cables from the wireless LAN module by grasping the connectors with a small pair of needle nose pliers or tweezers. Remove the P0 Phillips head screw that secures the wireless LAN module to the base enclosure. Grasp the wireless LAN module by the edges and pull gently to remove it. Replacement Align the notch in the wireless LAN module with the key in the wireless module slot on the system board. Gently insert the wireless LAN module into its slot on the system board. Replace the P0 Phillips head screw that secures the wireless LAN module to the base enclosure. Carefully reconnect the wireless antenna cables to the wireless LAN module. Caution! Use care when connecting the wireless antenna cables to the wireless LAN module. A damaged cable or connector can degrade notebook performance. How to replace the audio board. Before you begin, remove the top cover and battery. Removal. Using minimal force, lift the locking bars up on the audio board ZIF connectors and disconnect the audio board ribbon cables from the audio board. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the audio board to the base enclosure. Lift the right edge of the audio board off of the alignment pins. Guide the external connectors out of the cutouts in the base enclosure and remove. Replacement. Tow the external connectors on the audio board into the cutouts in the base enclosure and lower the audio board onto its alignment pins. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the audio board to the base enclosure. Insert the audio board ribbon cables into their ZIF connectors on the audio board. And press the locking bars down to lock the cables into place. How to replace the DC in connector. Before you begin, remove the top cover and battery. Removal. Disconnect the DC in connector cable from its connector on the system board. Remove the DC in connector cable from the routing channel on the base enclosure. Remove the T9 Torx head screw that secures the DC in connector bracket to the base enclosure. Carefully slide the DC in connector and bracket out from under the lip of the base enclosure and remove. Replacement. Tow the DC in connector and bracket in under the lip of the base enclosure. Replace the T9 Torx head screw that secures the DC in connector bracket to the base enclosure. Route the DC in connector cable into the routing channel on the base enclosure. Reconnect the DC in connector cable into its connector on the system board.
How to Replace the Display Panel Assembly Before you begin, remove the top cover, battery, wireless LAN module, and DC in connector. Removal Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the display panel ZIF connector and disconnect the display panel ribbon cable from the system board. Carefully remove the adhesive tape that secures the display panel cable to the left display panel hinge. Remove the display panel cable from the routing channel on the left display panel hinge. Carefully remove the adhesive tape that secures the wireless antenna cables to the left display panel hinge and base enclosure. Remove the wireless antenna cables from the routing channel on the left display panel hinge and base enclosure. Lift the locking bar up on the touchscreen cable ZIF connector and disconnect the touchscreen ribbon cable from the system board. Remove the touchscreen cable from the routing channel on the right display panel hinge and base enclosure. Remove the three T9 Torx head screws that secure the right display panel hinge to the base enclosure. Remove the four T9 Torx head screws that secure the left display panel hinge to the base enclosure. Rotate the display panel assembly to approximately a 45 degree angle. And carefully guide the display panel hinges out from under the lip on the base enclosure and remove. Replacement. Note, if installing a base enclosure, remove all components from the old base enclosure and install on the new base enclosure. Carefully guide the display panel hinges in under the lip on the base enclosure and open the notebook. Replace the four T9 Torx head screws that secure the left display panel hinge to the base enclosure. Replace the three T9 Torx head screws that secure the right display panel hinge to the base enclosure. Route the touchscreen cable into the routing channel on the right display panel hinge and base enclosure. Insert the touchscreen ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the system board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Route the wireless antenna cables into the routing channel on the left display panel hinge and base enclosure. Replace the adhesive tape that secures the wireless antenna cables to the left display panel hinge and base enclosure. Route the display panel cable into the routing channel on the left display panel hinge and base enclosure. Replace the adhesive tape that secures the display panel cable to the left display panel hinge. Insert the display panel ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the system board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. How to replace the system board. Before you begin, remove the top cover, battery, speakers, M.2 solid state drive, wireless module, and DC in connector. Removal. Important. If you are not replacing the system board, do not disconnect the RTC battery. 
Disconnecting the RTC battery will void all information stored on the RTC battery. Loosen the RTC battery from the adhesive that secures it to the base enclosure. Remove the RTC battery from the clips that secure it to the base enclosure. Remove the RTC battery cable from the routing channel on the base enclosure. Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the audio board ZIF connectors and disconnect the audio board ribbon cables from the system board. Lift the locking bar up on the display panel ZIF connector and disconnect the display panel ribbon cable from the system board. Lift the locking bar up on the touchscreen cable ZIF connector and disconnect the touchscreen ribbon cable from the system board. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the USB-C bracket to the base enclosure. Lift the USB-C bracket off of the system board and remove. Remove the seven or eight P1 Phillips head screws that secure the system board to the base enclosure. Peel back the metallic shielding that secures the system board to the base enclosure. Carefully lift the left edge of the system board and guide the external connectors out of the cutouts in the base enclosure. Remove the system board. Replacement. Note, if you are installing a new system board, remove the heat sink from the old system board and install it on the new system board. Carefully tow the external connectors on the system board into the cutouts in the base enclosure and lower the system board into the base enclosure. Caution, take care not to trap any of the cables between the system board and base enclosure. Replace the metallic shielding that secures the system board to the base enclosure. Replace the seven or eight P1 Phillips head screws that secure the system board to the base enclosure. Place the USB-C bracket in position on the system board. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the USB-C bracket to the base enclosure. Route the touchscreen cable into the routing channel on the right display panel hinge and base enclosure. Insert the touchscreen ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the system board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Route the display panel cable into the routing channel on the left display panel hinge and base enclosure. Insert the display panel ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the system board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Insert the audio board ribbon cables into their ZIF connectors on the system board and press the locking bars down to lock the cables into place. Insert the RTC battery under the clips that secure it to the base enclosure. Press down on the RTC battery to adhere it to the base enclosure. Route the RTC battery cable into the routing channel on the base enclosure.
Important. After a system board replacement, be sure to complete post-installation tasks as required that may include verifying functionality of the notebook, updating the BIOS, updating DMI and other settings. How to replace the heatsink. Before you begin, remove the top cover, battery, M.2 solid state drive, wireless module, DC in connector, and system board. Removal. In the numerical order indicated, remove the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the heatsink to the system board. Note, due to the adhesive quality of the thermal grease and thermal pads located between the heat sink and processor components, it may be necessary to move the heat sink from side to side to detach it from the system board. Lift the heat sink off of the system board and remove. Replacement Note, before replacing the heat sink, the thermal grease should be replaced. The thermal grease should be replaced every time the heatsink is removed. Use alcohol and a soft cloth or an alcohol swab to clean all thermal grease off of the heatsink and processor. Use the thermal grease applicator to apply thermal grease to the processor. Align the screws on the heatsink with the screw wells on the system board and place the heatsink into position. In the numerical order indicated, replace the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the heatsink to the system board. <laughs> 